the smartest basketball minds among players. He's he's on a very short list. Um, what's your what what were your experiences um, around Rajon Rondo or playing against Rajon Rondo? What do you remember about his career? I just remember the feistiness, the competitiveness, the ability to make everyone around him better. Right away, people talked about his IQ, his leadership, how he empowered the guys around him, and how he was a selfless point guard. Loved to get assists, loved to see other people play better, and the way he viewed and thought of the game was light years ahead of most of his peers. And with me coming to the league in 13, he was with the Celtics still. Um, they were still obviously very good. And then he played for the Mavericks and the Kings. And when he was with the Kings, you've seen the difference in Boogie, right? Boogie's development, Boogie's efficiency, all those things got better when Rondo was with him. Um, and then the Pelicans. I unfortunately lost to the Pelicans when he played for them. We ended up getting swept, actually, as a higher seed. And then he won a championship with the Lakers in the bubble and kind of went on to kind of play for the Hawks, Clippers, and, and Cavs. Uh, but you just got to see – an ability to impact the game in so many different ways, defensively, picking up, getting over pick and rolls, getting steals, getting penetration consistently throughout a game where he's getting downhill, dropping it to the big, spraying to, to Ray, um, spraying to, to shooters consistently, uh, which is something that you, you admired as a guard. Because this was a guy who wasn't known for outside shooting but still figured out a way to blow by the defender who was probably two steps off of him, which is an elite skill in itself. Yeah, I mean Rajan. I mean he he was um, a big personality. <laughs> you know, I think he. Um, I think every every to every team that you know I had conversations with about being his teammate, they a lot of people just expressed how in awe they were of um, his IQ. Uh, but sometimes, you know, because he was so smart, it made it oftentimes difficult for him to maybe see eye to eye with some people who didn't see the game his way. Um, but, you know, I, I think it's, I don't think you can debate that, you know, he was one of the better point guards of his generation. Um, and, you know, really was, you know, I know he wasn't included in the Celtics big three, but I think he was like, uh, there was a big four. He had huge impact on that championship in Boston. Um, you could say maybe he had a big impact on the, the demise of that team, but that's a conversation for another day. Um, you know, I think that he, you know, two-time two -time champion, four-time all-star. Rajon Rondo had a hell of a career. And um, do you think he'll ever get into coaching? Go big I blue. I, don't, I, don't, I, think I, don't. He, I, I think he will. I think he will. Right now he's in the phase of being with his kids. He's in the phase right now of coaching his kids, watching his kids develop and grow, nourishing them. Once his kids are older, the itch is still going to be there. And how do you scratch the itch? Player development. Maybe you – advisory role, consultant, you start off just, I'm going to just show them how to do pick and rolls. I'm going to just show them how to read the defense. The next thing you know, they got him. He's back in. So I think there's a chance that a guy who loves the game the way he does is involved in some capacity, even if it's I can as see a consultant, that. which I believe is the best way to, to stay involved in the game because you pick your spots, you give your dates, and you're around the game, but it's not overly controlling the grind. Your life. Yes. And I don't, I, you know, I don't know him. I, I just cut, I've just cut, uh, covered him, but I don't, we'll say, <laughs> could, could he deal with, does he have the temperament to be a head coach? Cause being a head coach and dealing with you, That's um, different. divas, you, um, <laughs> them dealing with those divas has got to be difficult, which is why I said player development and consulting, because you get to get in and get out, work with the players you want and vamos. And vamos, exactly. Vamos. And that's what, that's what we're about to do. Vamos. Uh, it's <laughs> Tuesday night. I'm in Phoenix. On so a make Tuesday. Sure to <laughs> check out Cavs Suns. Um, maybe the Cavs will, you know, wear Devin Booker down. 
for you guys when you take Cavs Suns. Take Ivana. Watch the Cavs Suns for a little bit, next. and then check out Pelicans Orlando Magic on League Pass, and maybe this is on Fox Eight. This might be on local local Channel Eight for those that are in the uh, actual Louisiana market. Second or screen. Valley Sports. Second screen again. <laughs> Second screen is crazy. Uh, I'll I'll have you guys on, too. I'll throw you on. Um, You're the best. I'll talk to you next week, and we'll see where you are in the standings. We'll see what the Pelican brief is. It's going to be – it's a big week. It's a big week. That's three games from now, huh? One, two, three. Yeah. Wow. Magic Spurs Suns. (laughs) 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 Yeah, I'm gonna